In this video, we will introduce waves in wave motion. First, we will distinguish between a wave pulse and a wave. Next, we will explore the different ways of categorizing waves, including transverse and longitudinal waves, mechanical and electromagnetic waves, and traveling and standing waves. We will also look at various wave properties that are used to describe waves, such as amplitude, frequency, period, wavelength, and wave speed. Let's consider a taut horizontal rope. If we give the rope a sudden up and down motion, a pulse will be produced that will look similar to this animation. The pulse will travel along the length of the rope and the tension in the rope restores the straight line shape of the rope once the pulse has passed. However, if the rope is given a continuous up and down motion, then a wave is produced along the rope as shown by this animation here. As the wave propagates through the rope, the particles of the rope are momentarily displaced from their equilibrium position, causing them to oscillate up and down. A wave can be defined as a disturbance that moves through a medium transferring energy and momentum from one location to another. The medium is the material through which the wave travels. It might be something like the strings on a guitar or the air for sound waves. One of the most common ways to categorize waves is based on the movement of the particles in the medium relative to the wave's direction of motion. If the oscillation of the particles in the medium is perpendicular to the direction of wave travel, we call this a transverse wave. The direction of wave travel or wave motion is from left to right across the screen. However, if we look at one of the individual particles in the medium, such as this red particle here, we can see that it is oscillating vertically in a straight line even though the wave itself is progressing from left to right. The medium itself is not moving from one location to another as the wave travels to the right. The particles of the medium are just oscillating about their equilibrium positions. It is also possible to have a wave that causes the particles of the medium to oscillate parallel to the direction of wave motion. This type of wave is called a longitudinal wave. Once again, the direction of wave travel is from left to right across the screen. But in this case, if we look at one of these individual lines within the medium, like this red one here, we can see that it is just oscillating horizontally in the same direction as the wave travels. We will now take a snapshot of both waves and explore more of their properties. Looking at this segment on the very left end of the medium, we can see that it has been displaced from its equilibrium position to this point all the way over here on the right. This maximum distance that the particles in the medium are displaced from their equilibrium position is called their amplitude. There are points in the medium that are all pushed together which are called compressions. Meanwhile, some points in the medium are very spread out which are called rarefactions. If we look at the wave as a whole, we can see that the compressions and rarefactions alternate and the pattern repeats. The distance between any two successive points where the wave pattern repeats, or more properly, the distance between any two adjacent points that are in phase is called the wavelength. In this case, we have labelled it as the distance between two adjacent compressions. We don't have to measure the wavelength as the distance between two compressions, but it is often easiest to measure from these points. These same concepts can be applied to transverse waves as well. The highest points of the wave are called crests, and the lowest points are called troughs. The height of the crest is the maximum displacement that a particle in the medium can reach from its equilibrium position. So the height of the crest is the amplitude of the wave. The crests and troughs alternate and the pattern repeats. So the distance between any two adjacent crests or two adjacent troughs will be equal to the wavelength. From this animation, watch how in the time it takes for one of the green lines of the longitudinal wave to complete one full oscillation, a compression in the longitudinal wave has travelled a full wavelength. Similarly, for the transverse wave, see how one full oscillation of one of the green particles in the transverse wave takes exactly the same time as a crest in the transverse wave to travel a full wavelength. The time that it takes for the wave to move a distance of one wavelength is called the period for the wave, and this equals the period of the individual oscillations. We could also look at the number of waves that pass a point per unit time. For example, the number of compressions or the number of crests that pass this yellow dotted line here in a set amount of time. This would be the frequency of the wave given in the number of waves per unit time, seconds to the minus one, or hertz, and will be equal to the frequency of the individual oscillations. Period and frequency are reciprocals of each other, as shown in this equation. 
If we combine these concepts together, we can get an expression for how fast our wave is moving through our medium or the wave speed. Recall that speed is equal to a distance divided by a time. Since the wavelength is the distance that the wave moves and the period is the time it takes to move a distance of one wavelength, wave speed is equal to wavelength represented by the Greek letter lambda divided by the period. Putting in this expression for the period, we can rewrite this as frequency multiplied by wavelength. So far, we have been discussing how to distinguish between wave types based on how they interact with their medium. A wave that requires a medium to move is called a mechanical wave. It can be a longitudinal wave passing through an air column like the one shown here, or it could be a transverse wave moving through a guitar string like this one here. One type of wave does not require a medium and can transfer energy through a vacuum, or in other words, empty space, and these are called electromagnetic waves. These waves are all made up of oscillating electric and magnetic fields, which transfer energy and momentum, where the green lines represent the electric field vectors and the red lines represent the magnetic field vectors. They are at a right angle to each other and at a right angle to the direction of wave travel, so electromagnetic waves are transverse waves. One one property of electromagnetic waves is that they all move at the same speed in a vacuum, known as the speed of light. There is actually a whole group of these waves, called the electromagnetic or EM spectrum. The entire electromagnetic spectrum operates in this way, and we categorize the different bands of the spectrum, like visible light and x-rays, based on the wavelength and frequency of the waves. A final way to distinguish waves is to categorize them as what we call traveling waves and standing waves. An example of a traveling wave can be seen here on the left. We can see that the shape of the wave, called the wave profile, appears to move across the screen from left to right. So we can say that the wave is traveling. The position of the crescent troughs changes with time, so every point in the medium eventually reaches the same amplitude. Additionally, as this disturbance moves through the medium, there will be a transfer of energy from one location to another. This animation to the right shows a standing wave. One noticeable difference is that we no longer see the wave profile moving across the screen. The location of the peaks of the wave are not moving or standing still, which is why we call it a standing wave. Points with zero amplitude are called nodes, and halfway between any two nodes, we have points of big amplitude called antinodes. Since a standing wave does not move, standing waves do not transfer energy. This wraps up our introduction into waves and wave motion. We will now provide a final summary of the key understandings from this video. This video explored various ways of categorizing waves. If the particles of the medium oscillated parallel to the direction of wave motion, these are known as longitudinal waves. But if the particles of the medium oscillated perpendicular to the direction of wave motion, then these were classified as transverse waves. Mechanical waves are incapable of transferring energy through a vacuum and require a medium to move. Meanwhile, electromagnetic waves are capable of transferring energy through a vacuum. A wave pulse is the result of a sudden disturbance in the medium. A traveling wave has a moving wave profile, and a standing wave has a stationary wave profile. In addition, properties of waves were discussed, some of which are related to each other by this equation.